In an earlier video, I made this board, designed this board here, and this board is meant to be a through hole replacement for this board, which I made earlier. This is a 64K RAM board for the Coco 2. I've just received this a couple of hours ago, and what I want to do is attempt to assemble it in one take. Like I said, I will attempt to do that. And I'm not going to use anything fancy, you know, soldering iron. I'm not going to hold, I'm going to have a circuit holder or helping hands, or at least not try not to use helping hands so that, you know, you can see that you can assemble this with like the bare minimum number of tools or whatever. So let's cut this guy open. And let's take a look at the board. Quality is pretty good. It looks just like the Gerber files I provided. Okay. And yeah, let's start putting this together. I've already taken out the components I want to use. Um, I am going to use sockets for this, although I don't really think it's necessary, but I'm just going to use sockets in case it doesn't work. I can take those uh, chips out and then figure it out. But once I have a working board, what I'll do is I'll just solder the stuff straight on there because there's really no need to take it apart. So let's start with the big guy. Okay, that goes in there. All right, and let's put, solder one leg or one pin rather. What am I doing? Okay, I hope you can see that. And you can see it's not straight, but that's okay, because that's what I usually do anyhow, just get one in there to keep it in place. And then I'll, I'll heat it up, and then I'll press down on it. And so now it's in place. Then I'll solder the next one. On the other side, make sure it's down there. If not, now I'll do this again. There we go. All right, now I can start soldering the other legs. I like to say legs, but really they're pins. All right, this is difficult to do while filming because I'm not using my loop. Okay, that's one row. Let's do the other row. Mm -hmm. Inspect that. From here, it looks fully soldered. Although I may have missed one because, like I said, this is hard to do, hard to see while, while recording this. Okay, so one in. All right, next. <clears throat> Let's do this socket. So, same deal, you know, I'll, I'll make sure one is soldered, then I'll. Press it down while I reheat the solder to make sure it's level. Okay. All right, much that looks pretty level already. But just to make sure, there we go. I'll do this one over here. And I could stand to be pushed down just a tad. There we go. Okay. And same process. Hmm. It's a lot of glare, so I'm 
having a hard time seeing this. All right. Let's try this. That's a little better. This side's a little better. Okay, let's inspect. They all seem to be soldered. Okay. Next. This socket. All right. Same deal. This one feels a little flatter, but let's double check here. Bam. And bam. While I press down on it, and it is flat. <clears throat> let's clean the tip. Let's inspect. That looks pretty good. Looking nice. All right. Let's bring out 0.1 microfarad capacitors. Okay. And let's do this one first because it's the oddball. These might stay in place, so. So what I'm doing is I'm bending the legs on the back there so they don't fall out. Um, I don't know why I can't find another one for this. I'm gonna use the oddball. So here we go. You can see the legs are bent out of shape there, but that's fine. We're gonna cut them off. So what I tend to do is I'll come and I'll, I'll solder one leg on each one. And I'll look and make sure everything is in order and it looks good. And I'll go and solder the other leg. Just snip them off. Okay. All right, almost there. Now we got these guys. So these are the breakaway headers. Sometimes this works here. Let's see. Oh, almost. There's one. Okay, that one worked. All right. All right, so what I'm going to do here is see how it's kind of wobbly? Um, actually, you know what? I'm just going to solder one in. 
on each one, more or less. Then I will take this, and it's spaced, more or less, um, to a spacing that is a multiple of the spacing on here between two rows, more or less, not exactly. Um, so I can, I can kind of do this. And the reason I do this is to make sure they're straight, well, straight-ish. And looking at it, it is not straight, so we're not going to do this. So I take back my comment that it's more or less. And I see that I am destroying it. No! Okay, don't do this with this board. It's not spaced how I thought it was spaced. Uh. Snafu. I may even have to redo this. Well, that's just going to have to come out, isn't it? So as you can see, that came out there. That's not how I wanted this to come out, but that's what's happening. So let me see. Luckily, we can rescue this. I just push that back in there. Okay. All right. We're good. And it's a little bent, but... Okay. That failed. That was a major fail. Don't do that. So what I'll do is I'll solder the next one over. Here's another thing you could do. Okay. And you can look at it. And it's straight enough. Another thing you could do is pop it into your cocoa and just solder it while it's in the cocoa. But I didn't, you know, it's kind of hard to get the cocoa over here because I already had it set up to just plug this in and have it work. So, and I got a bunch of wires there. So if I, if I move it, I have to disconnect a circuit that I'm working on. So that's why I didn't do that. But anyhow, this is what you need to do. Plug it into your cocoa and solder it on your cocoa. All right. All right. Moving on. Like I said, it's it's hard for me to see where the tip of the soldering iron is right now. I'm, I'm not using my loop or my magnifying glass to look at it. And since I'm using a light to film it, it's there's a lot of glare. But anyhow, uh, that's it. That's all the soldering in theory that we need to do. And it looks... It looks pretty good. Let's give it one final look here. All right. Now let's put in the chips. You can see I uh, made sure to put the, um, you might remember from the video if you saw it, um, the part number for the different chips on the silk screen. All right. And this one is uh, the Orgate, the 74 ALS32. Okay, Let's straighten out the legs a little bit on the table here so it goes into that socket. Okay, more or less. Oh, and by the way, this is plastic. I'm just grabbing it with my hands. I'm not grounded. This is really bad practice. Most of the time, you'll be okay. I have had chips get destroyed from a static discharge. Luckily, it's warm right now. It's not cold. I'm confident nothing's going to happen. Famous last words, right? So this is where this one goes. This is the orientation, okay? And no legs were bent. Good. Next. It's obviously gonna be that chip. Let's uh, straighten out the legs a little bit. 
All right, yeah, straight enough. All right, orientation, there's the divot. That's in, no bend to legs, divot, divot, everything's in there, okay. And now, memory module. Uh, what's ironic is that this is um, four megabytes, I think. Oh no, four megabits. And we're gonna be using 64K. For that. Four megabits is one megabyte. So let's, again, let's straighten this out like the other ones. Or 512K, no, I'm sorry, it's 512K. But we're only gonna use 64K. All right. And here is the orientation, all right. Did it go in all the way? It seems to have gone in. I didn't feel satisfying though. There we go. All right, looks good. It's a little taller than I wanted it to be, but that's fine. It works. Okay. Now we're gonna put it into the cocoa. I think. Let me see. So let's see if I can do this. All right. There's my cocoa. All right, there's the TV, and you're gonna see that no memory, we have an orange screen. This is why I didn't move it, by the way. If you, you see here I have a, a composite circuit that I made up because um, I don't wanna use the RF can anymore on this one. And this is a circuit that I think I'm going to uh, turn into a PCB and then you know, put up the design somewhere, but that's my composite circuit. Once again, nothing. Now. Let's plug in this board that we just made. All right. Please, let's not disconnect any of these wires. Um, all right. Okay. This, this. I think. All right. It's a nice fit. Looks good. Fingers crossed. Yay. All right. The board worked. First try, one take. I'm happy. All right. Of course, the requisite mega bug. So I thought I was going to do this in one take, and I mostly did. I mean, you pretty much saw it worked in one take. But as I was putting in the cartridge, I hit stop on my phone and I messed up the one take. So whatever, so now it's in two takes. But anyhow, um, what you're gonna see now is Megabug start working. And like I said earlier, I'm using this composite circuit there that I have, I'm gonna turn into a PCB later. Um, there you go, the requisite Megabug. It's doing that, you know what? Let's see how it fits with the keyboard. I didn't think about that. It's a good test. Oh, come on, keyboard. Plenty of room. Not crashing into anything, it works. So I'm Gonna put all the links down in the description. Uh, it's online already on GitHub. You can download it, order it. There's a bill of materials. You can make your own boards up. Um, I am planning on selling them as well. I have this many more. I can sell each one of these boards. I don't know, I was thinking maybe $5 or something. I don't know. But anyways, I'll put links to all that in the description. Um, but if not, you know, you can just Grab the Gerbers and order them yourself. All right. Thank you for watching.